American observers watched the shelling of Nazi positions in Acerno, a town in the path of the American advance in southern Italy. Orders are given to move up. In trucks and jeeps, the 5th Army rolls ahead. The twisted wreckage of powerful German Mark IV tanks lines the route of the Nazi retreat. Now the Americans occupy Acerno. Carefully, they search for snipers still concealed in the ruins of demolished streets. Captured Nazi soldiers are herded behind the lines. In accordance with international law, one is questioned by an intelligence officer. All find United States Army rations a welcome treat. Regiments of American soldiers of Japanese ancestry are a part of the United States Fifth Army. Born in Hawaii, they're intensely loyal to the land of their birth. General Montgomery, whose 8th Army is pushing up the Adriatic coast, visits General Clark at 5th Army headquarters near Naples. Montecorvino's important airfield is captured, still littered with Nazi planes that never got off the ground. Junker transports and Messerschmitts, not quite so formidable now. The Allied drive rolls on. All roads lead to Rome. Above the wild Assam mountains of northern Burma, rescue planes search for 20 men forced to parachute from a China-bound transport. Radio signals sent just before the plane fell have brought the searching parties to the scene. They sight the lost men in a clearing below, a remote village 6,000 feet up in the mountains. Food and medical supplies are dropped by parachute. A doctor and two medical corpsmen also are landed by parachute to give first aid to the maroon men. Strangely enough, these primitive natives, once headhunters of the jungle, proved to be the white men's best friends. They fed and sheltered the stranded party until help arrived from the skies. For three long weeks, the natives led the survivors through the wild, uncharted country, back toward the India frontier. His leg broken, the bearded flight sergeant who sent the message for help is borne by carriers. These pictures show the party nearing the end of their journey. Theirs is a dramatic story of heroism and survival. Without that radio message, they might have been lost forever. Happy ending to a modern saga of the jungle. New York's Fifth Avenue, 25,000 Americans of Polish descent parade in honor of General Pulaski, Polish hero of the American Revolution. <laughs> Children in gay national costumes of Poland brighten the line of march. Governor Dewey and the Polish ambassador review the annual procession as patriots march in the cause of freedom. Somewhere in England, General Arnold, commander of the United States Army Air Force, arrives to visit American airmen based in the British Isles. He inspects a battle-scarred bomber just back from a raid over Germany.
Also here is Captain Clark Gable, veteran of 10 raids over Europe. The one-time movie star, now a gunner in the United States Army Air Force. Near Detroit, Michigan, the first practical helicopter is brought to be placed in the museum of Henry Ford, the gift of inventor Igor Sikorsky. A pioneer in the development of aviation, the automobile magnet adds the Sikorsky craft to his famous collection. Near New York City, the Princess Martha of Norway comes with her three children to dedicate a Norwegian naval training station. Sailors of Norway's vast merchant fleet are greeted by the princess. Her small son and two daughters look on with pride as their mother, in the name of the king, decorates Norwegian officers for gallantry in action. Princess Martha, symbol of Norway's fighting spirit in the cause of the United Nations. The first Yugoslav units trained by the United States Army Air Force, with Liberator bombers they'll fly in combat, receive their wings and are presented to President Roosevelt. May these planes fulfill their mission under your guidance. They are built with two great objectives. The first is to drop bombs on our common enemy successfully and at the right points. The second is to deliver to your compatriots in Yugoslavia the much needed supplies for which they have waited so long. Deadly P-38 Lightning fighters form a protective covering for Allied bombers of the South Pacific Air Force as they roar in to destroy a Japanese air base on the north coast of New Guinea. Dozens of enemy planes line the landing field as the bombers come in with guns blazing. Striking miles to the east, another group hits installations at Nubia and Hansa Bay. Jap batteries their chief target. Now, low-flying B-25s unload tons of delayed action bombs. fighters write still another chapter in the United Nations new aerial offensive. Smoking ruins of Jap installations on the Gilbert Islands attesting to the accuracy of their fire. Off the coast of Tarawa, United States planes attack enemy shipping. Back to their carriers go the American planes. They've taken a heavy toll of Japanese ships, and now they're ready to celebrate. Even in wartime, the crossing of the equator finds the traditional King Neptune still holding court. The sailorman's sense of humor taking time out from the war. 